At Beijing's 80th Victory Day Parade, China revealed a stunning lineup of futuristic technology. Lasers mounted on carriers, an intelligent tank with its own drone, and new intercontinental missiles capable of reaching across the globe. This wasn't just a ceremonial event, it was a bold statement of ambition. In this video, we'll explore the breakthroughs on display and how they could reshape the balance of global technology and strategy. One of the standout moments of the parade was the debut of the LY-1 laser system. Mounted on a large truck, this directed energy weapon was described by state media as designed for deployment on aircraft carriers, with the aim of providing precise strikes against incoming aerial threats. According to CGTN, the LY-1 offers precision destruction and consistent strike, suggesting a move toward energy-based defenses that don't rely on conventional ammunition. Instead, these weapons only need a stable power source, a potential game-changer for sustained operations at sea. Complementing the LY-1, another truck-mounted high-energy laser was revealed within China's anti-drone units. State outlets reported that it is meant to operate alongside microwave weapons, combining forces to target and disable swarms of drones. This layered system hints at lessons drawn from recent conflicts worldwide where small drones have proven difficult to counter with traditional defenses. By pairing lasers with microwaves, China is experimenting with multi-tiered protection against modern aerial threats. Equally eye-catching was the Type 100 tank, which CGTN called highly intelligent. Unlike earlier Chinese tanks such as the Type 99, the Type 100 features an unmanned turret meaning the vehicle's crew remains protected within the main hull while remotely operating the main gun and roof-mounted weapon systems. China Daily added that it qualifies as a fourth-generation platform, equipped with augmented reality interfaces, advanced radar, and an active protection system. Close-up footage from the parade also revealed a quadcopter drone mounted on its chassis, suggesting the tank could deploy its own aerial support directly from the battlefield. Not to be overlooked were the robotic ground vehicles and quadrupedal robot dogs. Several were fitted with gun turrets or surveillance cameras, while others appeared built for tasks like bomb disposal or mine clearing. Their presence reflects how rapidly unmanned technologies are moving from experimental showcases into active military formations. Together, these unveilings, the LY-1 laser, the intelligent type, 100 tank, and robotic systems, signal a vision of future operations where energy weapons, artificial intelligence, and automation redefine how platforms function. Missiles took center stage during the parade, with several new models making their debut. The most notable among them was the Dongfeng 61 DF-61 intercontinental ballistic missile, which analysts believe to be an upgraded version of the DF-41. The DF-61 uses solid fuel, enabling quicker launches and improved mobility compared to liquid-fueled systems. Reports suggest a maximum range of about 12,000 kilometers, placing nearly any target on the globe within reach. Equally significant was the reveal of the DF-5C, a new liquid-fueled intercontinental missile. While slower to prepare for launch, liquid propellants allow greater payload capacity. Analysts estimate the DF-5C could carry up to 10 multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, MIRVs. This means a single missile could release multiple warheads aimed at separate locations, a capability designed to overwhelm defensive shields. With an expected range of 8,000 to 9,300 miles, the DF-5C can cover the entirety of the continental United States. China also expanded its strategic triad with the parade debut of the DF-31BJ, an updated ground-based system, alongside the JL-1 and JL-3, representing new air-launched and submarine-launched ballistic missile platforms. Together, these additions strengthen China's ability to maintain nuclear-capable forces across land, sea, and air. While little was confirmed about their exact performance, their appearance underlines Beijing's intent to show balance across all domains. Perhaps even more striking were the anti-ship missile systems. The YJ-20 stood out as a ballistic missile believed to maneuver at hypersonic speeds above Mach 5, making interception extremely challenging. Analysts noted similarities to the YJ-21, 
another hypersonic platform already under discussion in military circles. Alongside it were the YJ-15, reportedly powered by ramjets that use atmospheric oxygen for propulsion, and the YJ-19, said to be a more advanced variant also capable of hypersonic flight. Each of these platforms emphasizes range, speed, and accuracy against large naval targets. Finally, the DF-26D, a new version of the system sometimes nicknamed the Guam Killer, was shown. Unlike earlier variants, this model is designed as an anti-ship ballistic missile, adding mobility to long-range maritime strike capability. Together, these missile systems demonstrate an emphasis on expanding range, increasing survivability, and integrating hypersonic features. Beyond missiles and tanks, another theme of the parade was the increasing reliance on drones and autonomous systems. Two particularly intriguing platforms were the HSU-100 and AJX-002 underwater drones. Both shaped like torpedoes, they were presented as long-range, unmanned submersibles. Analysts compared them to Russia's Poseidon drone, which is believed to have nuclear potential, though there is no confirmation that China's designs have such capabilities. Instead, the HSU-100 and AJX-002 likely serve surveillance, reconnaissance, or strategic disruption roles in undersea environments where submarines typically dominate. China also showcased an evolving air and missile defense shield. The highlight was the Hongqi-29, HQ-29, described by state media as an interceptor designed to engage ballistic missiles even as they travel in space outside Earth's atmosphere. Its altitude capability also raises speculation that it could engage some satellites in low Earth orbit, expanding its utility beyond missile defense. Observers have drawn comparisons to the U.S. Terminal High Altitude Area Defense (THAAD) system, though specific performance data has not been confirmed. Supporting the HQ-29 was the upgraded HQ-9C, the latest in the HQ-9 family of surface-to-air systems. With improved radar, the HQ-9C is designed to intercept advanced aerial targets. This system has often been likened to Russia's S-300 platforms, but the new version appears to represent China's continued evolution in long-range air defense. On the ground, robotic innovations again played a key role. Uncrewed vehicles equipped with turrets and bomb disposal arms rolled in formation, while quadrupedal robot dogs marched beside them. Their presence highlighted Beijing's growing focus on automation and unmanned systems in roles ranging from logistics and reconnaissance to direct engagement. These machines reflect lessons learned from modern conflicts, where drones and robotics have shifted battlefield dynamics dramatically. Perhaps most intriguing was what didn't appear. Many analysts expected to see the J-36 or J-50 stealth fighter prototypes, rumored sixth-generation projects captured in unofficial photos. Yet, despite a flypast of more than 100 aircraft, neither was shown. This absence suggests China is keeping certain projects under wraps, either for secrecy or to time their reveal for greater impact later. Taken together, the underwater drones, missile defenses, and robotic platforms reflect a push into multi-domain operations, covering land, sea, air, and space. China's 80th Victory Day parade ended with a dramatic release of 80,000 doves, symbolizing peace. Yet the real takeaway was clear. Lasers, intelligent tanks, underwater drones, hypersonic missiles, and robotic systems all signaled a determination to leap ahead in technology. While many of these platforms remain untested, their unveiling shows how quickly the landscape of global innovation is shifting. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.